Hello, everybody. Mike from Southern California again, and you're on the mic. So I know when you guys see the the title of this video, um, you're gonna probably initially think it's a Shane, it's about Shane Holmberg, but it's not. Uh, the title of this video, of course, is going to be um, "Now the Shoe Is on the Other Foot." That's more referring to the old saying of how um, how you sometimes might find yourself all of a sudden on the other side of an issue, um, as is the case with Sean Schemmel. You know, of course, as everybody knows, Sean Schemmel has had a long-standing um, grudge, hatred for Vic. And of course, when all the stuff with with the accusation stuff come out, he jumped right on board the bandwagon. Even though there have been there have been times throughout when people like Marsgo were even saying that they probably would be going after him at some point. Well, now with with the case in a standstill at the moment, as we wait for um, Judge Shub's potential rulings, as well as whether or not the sides, you know. The judge, as everybody knows, ordered both sides to mediation. Um, we haven't heard anything about that yet. Um, with with a little over a week away, I you know have to almost kind of wonder if it is going to in fact happen because we know that. So I think Johnson was uh, Jamie's lawyer was off for a week on vacation. I don't know if that's this week or if that was last week. Jamie and Monica were at at cons last week, and Vic, of course, is going to be at Hawaii Con this week. So aside from the scheduling issues, um, basically, we all know, um, you know, basically, um, the judge basically told him, you know, get this resolved by. October 3rd, or rule on October 4th. He has up until October 6th, you know, a month, you know, 30 days, so, but 6th is a Sunday. So, I'm guessing he'll probably make his ruling on that Friday. Um, but with that being said, um, while there is that, the Lowland, Lowland case right now, um, you know, there's a lot of buzz still going around about stuff, um, Kick Vic is still trying to bury Vic, you know, with, with all he can. And now something just came out the other day in which some accusations of inappropriate behavior on the part of Sean Schemmel come out now. Um, where he's being accused of some, some of the stuff that Vic has been accused of. You know, it's kind of funny, though, how... How na now they're saying, well, yeah, don't don't believe don't believe these victims. No, no, um, these victims are lying. When the whole narrative was supposedly believe all victims, listen or listen and believe. No due process. Now, granted, Sean is not the most well liked person in the world. We've heard from many people, including Yellow Flash, that. Who have actually gotten to know him? Just he, he's basically he's a jerk, okay. But but Sean, just as equally as Vic, deserves due process. You know. Um, but now you know Sean locked everything down. He's like you know he's kind of retreated now, when he was one of you know. The most outspoken, you know, detractors of Vic. You know. And many on the kick Vic side have, like, sat there and, like, at least for right now, they're back in Sean, apparently. It's like, oh, no, he didn't do this. No, she's lying. She's like, you know. Um, no, not, not, yo, yo, he deserves due process, too. Well, nobody's arguing that. But people are... Going after you guys are bad as your hypocrisy. You are all down with bearing bearing Vic, but but if you play by your own rules, then you should be bearing Sean too. Can't have your cake and eat it too. K 
Okay. So now the shoe is on the other foot. Now uh, some well another person because we we know about like Neil Kaplan. You know Neil Kaplan was one of these guys who was coming out and saying a bunch of garbage about Vic at the beginning. But then when accus when he started receiving accusations, he kind of went silent. We haven't heard from him since. Nor has anybody, you know, with the exception of maybe one or two comments in the last maybe few days here because of the Sean situation, nobody's really talked about Neil. He kind of went off the radar, you know, when the accusation. Now Sean is going to start feeling some of the heat because now he is the one being accused. You know, now guys, don't go, don't go harassing him. Don't go. You know, don't go trying to for, force the issue with him. Just leave him be. You know, it's like, you know, it's like he deserves, you know, as much as we don't like the fact that him and Kick Vic have been going after Vic very hard and harshly, two wrongs don't make a right. You know, but now Sean is going to, Sean's gonna start to feel um, feel some of that vitriol now because of the because of the fact now he's the one being accused. You know, I know Yellow Flash had, had commented on. Well, Sean, shall we listen and believe them as well? The hypocrisy in Kick Vic is just astounding. Like, Vic, Vic, you know, he gives the fans a hug or a kiss on the a kiss on the head or a kiss on the cheek. Oh, he he's a sexual predator. Sean sticks a pen in between cleavage, um, cleavage of somebody's breast. Oh, oh, he's not a sexual predator. He wasn't trying to sneak a peek. What about Ron Ron Toy when it came out about when it came out about him, um, you know that he and in Ron Toy's case there actually was court documentation that he abused his ex wives. There was actual proof in Ron's case, as well as in Sarah White, you know Weedenhead's brother, who was convicted of having child porn on his computer. Again, actual arrest, actual police reports. Yeah, kick Vic and uh, say, well, Vic's still fired. Albeit, I think he still is receiving work. And I, I'm going to talk a little bit about that too real quick in, in a sec here. But let me just get back to my point. But, you know, you know, when it's one of them, oh, they deserve due process. But, but Vic, no. Which just goes to show you that to them it was never about victims. Okay? It's never about victims. What it boils down to, it's about power, jealousy, greed, corruption. That's it. Fit doesn't doesn't fit with their narrative. Vic is not part of their group. So, and even though he's well beloved by the fans, he's probably a lot more popular at conventions than, than they are. They have to get rid of him. Because they can't control him. And he's, you know, more popular than they are. So it just comes back to power, jealousy, greed, and corruption. Um, if it's one, if it's one of them, it's it's not a problem. It, whether it's Ron, you know, having court documents, or Sarah Weenhead's brother, or J, you know, L. J. Montello, you know, kissing or try, you know, kissing one underage girl and trying to kiss another. 
The hypocrisy just is astounding. You know, now, one other point I want to make, too, here. Because um, a lot a lot of kick vickers, you know, they realize they're losing the narrative. So they so they try to change the narrative. They, tr they move the goalposts, as, we, as many people talked about. They keep changing the narrative. Well, he's still fired. Yeah, from Funimation, from Rooster Teeth, but that may have been a good thing. Especially in Rooster Teeth's case. You know, there are people saying that he's still getting work with Bang Zoom and probably even with Sentai. And people say, well, no, he's not. No, he's not. Um, here's something I was even thinking about this morning in terms of uh, in terms of what you got. Well, we, we don't know that he's working or they're not. Well, of course they're not saying anything. Because there's one factor I think everybody has seemed to for have forgotten, including myself, until I was thinking about it this morning. The one thing that people have to remember is that when when these companies, whether it's Funimation or Bang Zoom or Sentai or or Viz or or Blue Water or or um, Ocean or Media Blast, wh whatever dubbing company there is, whatever licensing company there is, almost all the t almost in every instance I, th I think it is in every instance in fact the VAs who are working on the project are are compelled or or ha have to sign a non-disclosure agreement so even and I've seen this happen myself at times and and I know Kyle addressed this the other Kyle a. bear addressed this the other day in a tweet and I I retweeted it you know well okay not no, that never mind. That that part with Kyle, that was something different. That was in regards to cons. But I've heard Kyle refer mention this too. But oftentimes, if you ask um, a, a VA if they're working on a particular project, they will tell you they can neither confirm nor deny that because they're it, it, they're under a non -disclo disclosure agreement, which basically means they cannot talk until. Until the product is ready to be shown, you know, until the, the dubbing is done, until it's ready to be broadcast, they can't talk about it. They cannot disclose it. They cannot tell you whether or not they're working on a project. Now, I can't be 100% sure, but that might also include... That might extend to the dubbing companies. If if they, they if Vic is working on a current project with Bang Zoom or or Sentai, he may not even be able to tell you that he's working on the project because you know he might not even be able to tell you that he's you know which studio or whatever you know. So the non-disclosure agreement might even extend to the to the dubbing studios as well. Or to the licensing companies as well. So, you know. So you should take that into consideration the next time you say oh, he's still fired. Because we we do we do know that of course he's working with Set Fantasy Soft. That much we do know. Um, I've heard people talk about that. There are I guess some OVA specials involving Rohan from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Diamond is Unbreakable, where. Um, He's still, of course, voicing Rohan. Um, Vic himself has said that he's gotten a lot more. Now, it's understandable that a lot of these voice actors don't want to come out publicly and support him, because, especially with how kick Vic is acting, this mob mentality. But what I would tell all of you out there who are trying to avoid the drama, I understand and appreciate that. But there is a time when you're going to need to stand up to these bullies. You should take heart and take courage in the fact that there are fans out there who will back you up when the mob when the mob starts acting like a bunch of jerks. L look at Vic, you know. These people tried to destroy the man. They tried to burn his whole life down. They went to ruin his reputation. 
tried to make him a pariah on, on the anime scene altogether. Yet, there were enough of his fans and enough people who, who believed in due process that said, no, we're not going to let this happen. This is happening way too damn much in our country. Where these mobs are gaining too much power. These social media mobs, you know, just spread a little, little bad, bad word on, on social media, on Twitter or on Facebook or, or Instagram or whatever. And let's, 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 let's try to burn somebody down. Let's try to, to technolo technologically lynch somebody. But, you know, as I said, you know, in Sean's case, now, now that he's being accused, now the shoe's on the other foot. He's gone private. He's private his Twitter. Kind of gone into hiding. Kind of like Neil did when that, when the accusations came out about him. Guess that's a case of not being able to practice what you preach. Kick Vic. Anyways, you guys, um, that's it for that. Um, check out the links below. If you want to contact me directly, my Twitter handle will be down there. Um, you can direct message me or, of course, comment on the videos or comment. Um, or you can, you know, reply to, to my replies to tweets and what have you. Um, as you all notice, if you take a, if you hit show more and look, you know, I, I'm, I'm promoting many of the other dub, major dubbing companies in, in the in the states and Canada right now. You guys should really check those out. You know, Funimation may right now be the big dog, and I know everybody's talking about the deal that came out yesterday where Sony was basically consolidating all the properties. Um, of course, some people argue that that's more for, like, the international production that may not have as much effect on what's going on here in the states you know um but it's interesting but anyway so the one of the best ways to stick it to funimation though is to start supporting the other companies start supporting the ones here in la like biz and, and bang zoom and you know sentai and houston and media blasters and i think g kids also based out of New York, as well as 4K Media, you know, and of course, Ocean and Blue Water up in Canada. Start supporting the other companies. You know, and start asking, when you go to convention, start asking for for some of their voice actors to, to show up and that you can meet them. Um... And also, as you guys know, I'm also got a couple GoFundMe's um, in my, um, as well as that Umbrella guys in the GoGo, you know, for his comic. Um, as always, guys, never feel like you have to donate. If you have the ability to and it's, it's on your heart to do so, please consider donating. If, um, if you've already donated, please consider donating again if it's still within your means. And if you can't donate, you can still help help the still help the um, cause by sharing the link. Maybe there's somebody in your network of friends who who may see it and may decide, hey, you know, th this sounds like a cause I want to get behind. You know, check them out at least, or at least pass along the links to check to have people check them out. And. Um, Always remember, too, guys. If you want, if you want a particular guest, let me. And this is actually what I was referring to with with Kyle A. Bear's tweet the other day. If you want specific guests at at your con, at your local con, you got to contact your local cons and politely ask them, and politely and respectfully ask them, "Hey, we want we want to see this person here. We want to see this person at your con." That's how you. That's how you get, you know. Yes, to con that's how you get some of your favorite voice actors and maybe some you'd like to get to know more at, at to cons is by requesting them. And with that, if you like this content, please consider liking, commenting, 
sharing, subscribing. I always look forward to the conversation with you guys, as, of course, as long as it's respectful. Um, I won't tolerate harassment or taunting or or anything anything negative. Um, so, so what I, so what I would just simply, you know, ask you guys, you know, consider liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing. I look forward to the conversations with you. And don't forget this Friday, the premiere of Deborah Rabai, um, vo Voices Big and Small, Deborah Rabai, a.k.a. Um, Angora Deb. I hope you guys will, will join me to check that out. She's a New York-based voice actress. Um, probably best known for her as the voice in the English dub of Boogie Pop from Boogie Pop Phantom. If you want to learn more about her, um, come Friday night and check that out. And until tomorrow, guys, talk to you later. Bye.